Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at a tool called Hacking Tool. This one is presented as an all-in-one collection that pulls together many different utilities for information gathering, payload handling, and various offensive style capabilities. I'm not here to show you how any of it works. I'll explain what the tool claims, why it draws attention, and the important ethical and safety questions it raises. Hacking Tool is packaged as a comprehensive toolkit that aggregates a wide variety of smaller tools and scripts under one interface. The idea is to provide many categories of utilities in a single place, from reconnaissance and network mapping to payload generation and post-exploitation helpers. The repo acts more like a catalog or bundle of capabilities rather than a single narrowly focused utility. Below are the major categories and representative capabilities the tool advertises. This is a plain list of claims, not instructions or how-tos, information gathering and reconnaissance, which includes network mapping, port scanning, email and domain OSINT tools, website status checks, and search engine dorking utilities. Anonymity and hiding, like multi-proxy and anonymized browsing helpers intended to obscure request origins. Wireless and network tools, such as Wi-Fi deauthentication utilities, wireless auditing helpers, and related wireless modules. Payload and exploit frameworks, which cover payload creation helpers, payload injectors, and integration for common exploit frameworks. Social media and credential tools, including social media username discovery, credential checking, or brute force style modules, as listed categories. Phishing and web attack helpers, like phishing template lists, web-based attack helpers, and site scanning tools. Post-exploitation and rats, with remote administration tool mentions and modules for interacting with compromised endpoints as listed. Forensics and reverse engineering, which offer tools for analyzing binaries, extracting hidden data, and reverse engineering assistance. Steganography and data hiding, with tools for embedding or extracting hidden messages in files or images. Password and hash utilities, such as word list generators, hash cracking helpers, and password list references. DDoS and network stress modules, which are categories listing distributed denial style attack utilities. And finally, miscellaneous tooling, including XSS helpers, SQL injection references, payloads, and many small utilities grouped under other categories. These are the high level categories shown in the tool's materials. Specifics vary, and many entries are themselves references to other open source projects. Bundles like this attract attention because they make it easy to see, at a glance, a lot of offensive capability collected in one place. For researchers and curious users, that's informative. For others, that aggregation can look alarming. Visibility and ease of access are why these repositories become popular and controversial. Alright folks, Chapter 5. What we know, versus what we don't know. So here's the scoop. What we do know is that the repository brings together a whole bunch of categories of security tools and uh, references a really long list of external utilities and modules. It's kind of framed as this all-in-one toolkit, you know, and it even includes documentation and a lengthy readme. But here's what we don't know. We have no clue which specific items actually work right out of the box, which ones need external dependencies, which are up-to-date, and, well, what legitimate safeguards, if any, are in place to prevent misuse. Moving on to Chapter 6, Ethical and Safety Considerations. So there are a few important points we really need to keep in mind here. First off, aggregating offensive capabilities, well, it increases the risk of misuse. I mean, convenience can seriously lower the barrier to harmful activity. And, you know, many of the listed categories include techniques that in the wrong hands or contexts are illegal. So intent and authorization, they matter hugely. Plus, tools that interact with networks, devices, or personal data, they raise privacy, consent, and legal concerns. Responsible use, it implies testing only in controlled, authorized environments, and of course, prioritizing defensive learning over offensive application. So, who actually finds this kind of toolkit useful in lawful contexts? Well, security teams and penetration testers, working under proper authorization, often need a solid reference list of tools. Educators and students, especially those studying cybersecurity toolchains in lab environments, also benefit from having access to these resources. Then there are researchers who are interested in analyzing the availability and composition of offensive tool ecosystems. 
and, of course, defenders who want to understand what potential attacker tool sets look like so they can, you know, build better protections. Now let's talk about why this sparks so much debate and uh, some of the key questions that come up. Should large aggregations of offensive tools be hosted publicly without any kind of access controls? How can maintainers balance openness with the responsibility to prevent harm? There's also the question of what role platform hosts, law enforcement, and the broader security community should play in policing or contextualizing these toolkits. And maybe most importantly, how can everyday users protect themselves from the threats these tools make? Well, easier to find. Hacking Tool is a striking example of how many separate offensive and investigative utilities can be grouped into one place. While collections like this can definitely serve educational, defensive, or research purposes, they also raise real risks if used without proper authorization or ethical constraints. Whenever you encounter tool bundles like this, it's important to ask about intent, legality, and source reliability, and above all, to prioritize consent and safety. If this kind of breakdown helps you, let me know which tool or category you want next. I'll keep analyzing these tool aggregations from an awareness and ethics perspective, not to teach misuse, but to help people understand the landscape and, hopefully, 